because this is a face that has been with us for about 50 years now. Uh, the face that brought hope to the blacks. And that's Jermaine Jackson, the uh, very illustrious uh, Jackson family that made so much impact on we Africans, Nigerians particularly. We love you guys. We're so happy that uh, you decided to come. Thank you. And this is your home. I hope you've been told this by everybody. Exactly. Now, tell me how you felt when you landed on Nigerian soil. I haven't heard about the kind of love we people exude towards your Americans, especially your family. Well, the first time we came to the A African soil was in 72. It was, was in 72 on Gori Island at Senegal and we were just amazed because we felt such a connection and it was like coming home and we we saw things that we didn't read accurately in the history books at home but we felt good we felt at home there was a great celebration and we and we didn't want to leave but then since then we came back and we made other trips to other parts of Africa, and uh, it has been a connection with us ever since. Hmm. Fantastic. Now here you are again, after so many years that you have uh, been out of touch. I'm sure you must have been keeping touch with us in very many ways, but now you're here physically. What has brought you here this time around? What has brought me here is, uh, uh, it's been 50 years for us, and it's 50 years for for Lagos to be recognized as a state. And um, with that being said, 50-50 E equals 100. So there's gonna be a lot of, 100% of success and good things. We plan to do a concert and a tour, a 50th anniversary African tour for the continent of Africa. Um, that's why we're, we're here and also I, I've been um, uh, sort of um, looking to do a Jackson Academy Performing Arts School where we teach the arts and in the entertainment business and the film business as, as well. And there's a lot of talent here that needs, needs help and just a, a little bit to push them and get them ready for the global market. So those two reasons are why we're here. Fantastic. and. Um how far have you gone so far? I haven't really stepped your feet here. Well, I've met a lot of influential people, and it looks like that we're going to get things ro rolling forward on a good foot. Um, it's so much to do here. It's so much history. And um, I guess our presence here is just going to continue the inspiration and, and the influence. Uh, but at the same time, we want to entertain for you. We want to give back to you for what you've given us for so many years, that support and that love and knowing who we are. Uh, we are African Americans, but at the same time, our roots are here. And it's because of you that we are strong, that we are who we are. And sometimes we get caught up into the propaganda and the, uh, the sensationalism that the American media has offered, but we've always stayed grounded and because of our roots and to know who we are. And nothing's going to be easy for us, so we know that we have to have thick skin to deal with all the things that are being said, but at the same time, we know where we come from. That's why we know where we're going. Hmm. Now, two things have brought you here. First, 50th anniversary of the existence of Lagos and your academy that you have in mind. And I think you couldn't have had a better way to celebrate Lagos than having you to come and celebrate with us. You're a name that we love so much. I can say that over and Thank over you. again. That should Thank tell you. you the kind of feeling we have towards you. Now, the academy bit, let's go into it. It will interest a lot of us. The let's academy, appreciate a bit on that. The Jackson Academy Performing Arts School will be an institution where we will bring top professors and teachers over in their field of music and directing, producing, lighting, uh, song, dance, to teach and to inspire and to 
give talks, to sort of give the talent that you have here hope. And because um, it's it's just that it's so much talent here, and and with the right direction and the right push, I I think you can turn out a lot of great talent for the world. We had help when we started, so I think it's important to um, sort of give back. Hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard that you're going to have some plane tours. You're going to use this as um, a way to also reach out to other states of Nigeria. Give me a bit about your itinerary while you're here. Well, to start off here in Nigeria is really important because you have a new leader, a new president that I'm very excited about. I got a chance to meet um, Her Excellency. She's a wonderful human being. And I met the daughter and we had a very good talk. But besides what we spoke about, it felt good. And I'm very happy to know that Nigeria has someone who cares about the people. Um, I've always been interested in seeing a new Africa. I know a lot of your past leaders. You go way back and I know them. I've sat with them. I've been in their homes. I've been with their kids. And I'll just say it's time for change and it's time for someone to show people that they care. And I think if this is the start of a new Africa right here in Nigeria and Lagos, it would flourish to the rest of the continent. And then that will give that that um, that feeling of cutting that umbilical cord between Europe and here, and, and you standing on your own, because this is a very rich, blessed nation. It's Africa that built Europe, that built a lot of the world. And the world has taken so much from Africa, and it's time for them to give back. But I'm very happy about His Excellency Bukhari. Yeah. Um, I haven't met him yet, but I just watching the whole situation unfold back at home on the news and and I wanted him to be the leader. Um, he's a Muslim, so am I, and um, I think he's going to do well. I, I think you're going to be very happy with him. Okay, well, that's fantastic. As we go on, we might come back to that. But the younger generation will not forgive me if I fail to ask you to rewind, to go back in time and Tell us how you guys began. And, uh, what how we the, started? Yeah, the, dif the defining moments of your career. Most of people, most of those who see you these days are the younger ones who just read about you. Well, we started, uh, my father was a musician and he had a guitar. And he would tell my mother, he would say, Kate, when I leave home, I don't want those boys playing my guitar. And so, like, Kids, you don't tell kids that because they're going to do it anyway. So Tito, <laughs> my brother Tito went in the uh, in my father's closet and got his guitar and he was playing it for at least a good six months. And my mother would say, honey, your dad's going to be home in about 15 minutes. You better put that guitar up. So right close to my father get home, Tito would put the guitar up. One day he broke a string on the guitar and I said, wow, we were all afraid. And my father picked up his guitar, he saw his string broken, and he said, who's been playing my guitar? And Tito said, I have. And so he was gonna get a, a spanking, but then my, Tito said, let me show you what I know how to play. So he started playing some, uh, some Motown music and we started singing and getting involved and that's how it happened. But it was just me, Tito, and Jackie. And we wanted to be like, the Isley brothers, because there were three of them and three of us. And during that time, Michael and Marlon were too little. They were running around in the room playing with cars and, and stuff, begging to be in the group. And we said, no, you're too young. <laughs> then all of a sudden, Michael started doing the James Brown and dancing and things. And, and so we finally let him in the band, and that's how we became the Jackson Five. Hmm. Another thing that will excite us, we Africans, Nigerians particularly, is that when you guys came on the scene, before you came on the scene, there was this demarcation, this dichotomy between the blacks and the whites. But you guys broke it. How did you do it? Well, we, we never felt that there was a competition because we didn't look at 
somebody else's competition. We just knew that we were going to go out there and shut it down. And when you know you're the best and you have the right training and you prepare, preparation is everything. There's nothing you can't do. And we were raised to to admire James Brown and Temptations, Joe Tex, Smokey Robinson, The Miracles, uh, 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 just Sam Cooke, some of the greatest. And, and so having that, growing up and wanting to be like these people, even Ray Charles, when we got on that stage, we never lost the contest. And we always mesmerized the people because we put the hard work into it. And that's, that, that's a lesson to be taught. It is like my father, when we were very young, he would teach us this mind thing of, of just see it in your mind, think it, believe it, make it happen. And that's what he would do to us, and we never understood that. He said, visualize it. You can see it. You can do it. And so when we came out to California, my father's whole thing was to keep the family together. And um, I look at that as like a tree. The root of this oak tree is my mother and father, and the branches are the different brothers and, and, and sisters, and his job was to keep us together, and knowing now we're in Hollywood with the vultures, the attorneys, the, the lawyers, and the accountants, and the this and that, and they didn't look at the tree as a beauty for its whole. They looked at the tree for their own selfish greed to take a branch here and there. My father's whole thing was keeping us together, but I will say, um, we had a lot of success because we were very fortunate to hook up with Barry Gordy, who introduced us to the world as the Jackson Five. And there were four number one records, and that's never been done before, ever. A band that's unknown to come out to have four number one records, and two of them, like the Beatles, on the number one spot. And then um, it, after that ran its course, the brothers were wanting to go to somewhere else, and I said no, because Motai introduced us to the world as the Jackson 5. They wanted to go on to Sony. And Sony was saying, well, we're going to make you like the Beatles. I said, but we're the Jackson 5, and we're already knocked them out of the number one spot. So they went on to Motown. I stayed, and it was a lot of questions. Well, he stayed because he was married to the boss's daughter, and that wasn't true. I stayed because I felt I'm a very loyal person. I felt since Motown introduced us to the world as the Jackson 5, that's where I wanted to stay. And then after that, Michael, um, there was a situation where um, the play came up, The Wiz, and it came through Motown for Michael to play the Scarecrow in, in, in The Wiz. So Barry Gordy calls him and says, do you think Michael can play the, the Wiz? And I was so excited for, for him. I said, yes, because Ben Vereen during the time could have played it too. And so. When Michael did The Wiz, uh, and he, he played The Scarecrow, that's where he met Quincy Jones, and they did Off the Wall, Thriller, and this and this. But what happened was, in the home in California, Michael never forgot, and we still never forgot what my father said. Think it, see it, believe it, make it happen. He wrote Thriller on his mirror, the most albums ever sold. He looked at that every day when he woke up, when he went to sleep. And that became a reality. To this day, it's the biggest selling album ever. Now, let us take a look at the, uh, the new generation musicians. You guys, mm -hmm. when you came on, it was a different ball game altogether. But the entertainment industry has continued to evolve. Very dynamic, and I'm sure you know this. Draw some parallels between your time and what you're seeing these days. Well, what we're seeing these days, these days, we we see our influence every day from kids. The only difference is technology has taken it where the true musician has been robbed of his job because you can push a button and the drum machine plays for you. Uh, you can push another button and you have a program and, and you can program things and there's synthesizer that does the strings so you take the the, the violin we, players we, out of the We way. also have been robbed of the naturalness of yes. performances. So when we started, it was important to play an instrument and to sing and dance. And you're not going to, we were always told, you're just not going to sing. You got to move. Mm. And, and you got to perform. You got to entertain. The artists today, they're, 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 they're very good, but they're not picking up instruments. And, 
and there's they grew up in this age of technology so they're used to to the electronics and the this and the that and that's not true mu musicianship it's like there was something about those songs we had real musicians that playing you can feel now everything is so perfect that it's taking the feeling out of it it's so perfect tempo and it's perfect sound and it just takes the feeling out of the the song hmm. I can tell you, you can say that again. Everybody says that, and that's why we have a lot of respect for those of you who can play as many instruments as possible. How many of these can you play? Well, I write, I started out playing bass, and um, I was, I play, I write songs on the piano. I play drums, and um, I play a little bit of harmonica being around Stevie Wonder. It kind of inspired me to play. I played harmonica on a few of my songs, but, um, I basically play bass. I basically play bass and piano. Now let's get back to 50 years of Lagos that has brought you here primarily. Uh, give us an idea of what we're expecting from you, from your own perspective. Now. Well, we want to come here and and sort of show you where we get our roots from, and show you that we've never forgotten who we are and the connection that we have with you. Uh, drums years ago was a means of communication and drums started here and it's the beat that says something it does something to your body it makes you want to move Mike used to always say God is using his body as a tool God is using his body as a tool and he moves because God inspires him through the music um, but it all starts here, and, and so we want to give Lagos, Nigeria, what they expect of us, and that's an incredible performance, and that love, that, that connection back and forth, and that smiles, and just let them know, hey, we are you, you are us. We've lived in the States, but we're still connected. There's still a connection. Hmm. You're going to give us the last word now, and... Um Nigeria, we've been going through all kinds of problems because we've put our eggs in one basket. We've been in a monocultural economy, depending on oil almost all our lives. We're just thinking to go beyond oil now. I mean, America has made so much from entertainment. Give us an idea. What kind of things do you think we should be doing, you know, to, to make it big in entertainment? I mean, we can see the performances, but how can we convert that to money, which we're I lacking now? I think to create a, a strong nation, you got to educate the people and you got to give them the chance to be themselves and speak out. Um, there are a lot of answers and at the same time there are a lot of questions that need to be answered, but I think the youth today can show you a way to peace and to prosperity. Um, the old regime is going out, the new world is coming in. At the same time, no matter whether you're old or new, you have to have the passion in your heart to care for the people and to see a change. Greed has played a big factor in cor corruption, not in just Africa, many parts of the world. And we, we can't lose the sense of caring for each other and knowing that there is a God and we have people. The people give you the power. You don't come in as a king if you don't have no one to rule over what power do you have. It's the people that give you the power. I think if, if um, you learn from your mistakes and you just get someone like Muhammad, who I feel him, who wants to make a change and it's not going to be easy, it's going to be hard, but at the same time, the people will feel that he cares for them. And when people feel that you care about them, they would do for you. And uh, that's how things can be better. Well, I want to uh, thank you very much and uh, leave us with this. I don't know if you want to sing us out of this. Any of your uh, favorite songs that you think uh, no, we like to hear ourselves before we go to the main stage, you know, no, make us a 50. Let's make this a preamble to it. It's, I'll just say this, with knowing how powerful Africa is and knowing 
that uh, the influence is had over the world, which is not written in the Western world, because they don't want us to know. But we travel, we know. I want to thank um, just Africa, Nigeria, for being who you are. Uh, you're real, you're pure, you stay true to who you are. Um, and the support that you've given our family over the years that we've never forgotten, we've never sold out, we've never forgotten our brothers and sisters here. And, and um, it makes you proud be, be, because we have a homeland. We come from somewhere. We don't come from America. We come from here. Whether we were taken against our will or not, this is home for us. And um, I, I just want to end it by saying, uh, singing a few lines of I'll Be There. You and I must make a pact. We must bring salvation back. Where there is love, I'll be there. Love is very important. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs>